I am sitting here with uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, and you're probably wondering why. And it's just simply for the reason that this is the inspiration for my next project. So everyone knows this thing as a console, but if you think about it, it's actually a computer. Inside, there's an 8-bit processor called the 6502, a special chip for the graphics. And in a sense, that's what I want to do. I want to make my own single board computer, or maybe game console type thing, using an old 8-bit processor and some supporting chips. Earlier, I bought uh, a package of chips um, from eBay, some really old chips. Anyway, let's introduce you to each of them. This one here is the 6502. This is uh, an 8-bit processor. It's actually the same 8-bit processor used in the Atari 2600 and the Nintendo Entertainment System. This here is a 6522. This is like uh, a port chip. I'm going to use this for the uh, joystick ports. This here, the TMS9918A. This is a graphics chip. In fact, it's the original graphics chip used in the ColecoVision. This, the AY38910A, is a sound chip. Um, it was used, I think, in some of the old arcades and I believe also in the Intellivision. Hi again, I'm here with a package uh, shipped by DHL. This is from China and it should be the PCBs. It's from all PCB. So these are done in white, which is different. I've never made a board that has white um, solder mask. So very different having a whiteboard with, with black silk screen. You've seen some of my green boards and blue boards and all of you, Daniel. Anyway, here is the uh, the whiteboard. Okay. Do you want to see, Jen? Hmm. Why is it white, not blue? No, because I decided to get it white. For this company, blue would cost extra money, like an extra $5 or something. Huh. Green and white were the cheapest. Uh, well, some time has passed and I installed most of the passive components on this, like these through-hole resistors, surface mount capacitors. Um, now it's time to start installing some of the active components, like these uh, little dips here. So, this is the first through hole active part anyway. My iron's been a little finicky, but uh, let's hope for the best here. Kind of takes a long time, but uh, it's not that difficult, I guess. Well, I finished my board, at least more or less. Um, so yeah, it actually looks uh, pretty decent, uh, the white background um, looks good against like the black uh, components, nice contrast. Well, I think I have my first uh, bit of software uh, working. So the software resides in this here, in the ROM. And this one is a really simple piece of software that basically reads bit zero on port zero and then whatever that state is it will write it to bit 7 on port 0 and in this case uh, bit 7 on port 0 is connected to this LED so I think it floats high so when we're not connecting to this port pin uh, the light will be on but now theoretically when I set it to ground which I have at this mounting post anyway when I set it to ground that light should go off and it does. 
release, and then ground, release, ground. Okay, so that's definitely a good sign. Okay, um, I had some trouble getting the audio going. Uh, the first problem is that I made a mistake on the RC uh, connectors here. So I had to do a cross out cable, uh, sorry, crossover cable. Uh, and the other thing too is um, I looked at the signal on the oscilloscope and there was like this maybe three volt DC offset. So what I did is I put a load approximately 10K um, at the capacitor's output, sort of shunting that to uh, ground. And that got rid of the DC offset. And then so we're going to try to see if the audio works. I programmed this thing here to do a uh, middle C. And then I'm going to press reset and the code should go in. And if we're lucky, we'll hear some sound. So anyway, that's the screen now. I think we'll get some crazy video. And a tone, which I don't have a musical ear, but I think this is middle C. So if, yeah, uh, we'll try something a little more ambitious. Maybe try to get a song working on this later. Okay. Um, I've got a song here, a really lame one. So bear with me here. Okay, and then it repeats, unfortunately. Just like in the case of audio, I messed up uh, my pinout for the RCA connector. So it required a another uh, crossover cable. But anyway, um, at least with this crossover cable, I'm able to get some video stuff to work. So I'm going to show you a... Uh, demonstration that has like a simple tile uh, pattern and then a moving sprite. So here it is. Um, I have this little uh, brick pattern type thing um, as the background and this is supposed to be uh, a spaceship going by. So there you have it. A homemade retro computer using the 6502 processor. This was definitely one of my more challenging uh, projects. Um, I knew it was going to be difficult, but uh, it was even a little more difficult than I thought. A lot of uh, troubleshooting and whatnot, a lot of hurdles. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased. Um, like cross over cables aside, I'm able to do uh, video and audio and the ROM, the RAM, every major block works.